everybody, we're surging. The knives are coming out again. A lot of myths. We'll debunk them one at a time. Tell the truth at every step. So actually, to make this easier, you can go to vivek2024.com slash fake news. But I'll address a couple of them that have been popular in the last couple of days. One is that I somehow made a lot of money off of some failed drug for Alzheimer's disease. Wrong. The fact of the matter is I did develop a drug for Alzheimer's. And like 99.7% of drugs that have ever been tested for Alzheimer's disease, it did fail. Nearly every drug ever tested for Alzheimer's has failed. In fact, most drugs for most pharmaceutical companies fail for a small number of successes. Now, in my case, did I make money off of that? No, in fact, I could have. The subsidiary of my firm, Royvent, that developed it, called Axivant, Royvent could have sold shares in it. I could have sold shares in it. I didn't. Some people would call that honorable. To the contrary, how I made my money was by developing five drugs that are FDA approved today. One of them is an approved drug for prostate cancer. Another for endometriosis and uterine fibroids. Another for psoriasis. Another for overactive bladder. Another for kids, 20 of whom are born every year with a genetic condition. 100% of them die by the age of three if they're untreated. A majority of those kids have a chance to live lives of normal duration if they are treated. I'm proud of those accomplishments. That's exactly how I achieved success and yes, achieved wealth through free market capitalism, which we shouldn't apologize for. Hardship is something that happens to you. Victimhood is a choice. And I choose to be victorious. That's what I tell young people across this country as well. We should embrace capitalism rather than apologizing for it. Something that professional politicians would perhaps do well to learn for themselves. One of the other criticisms we've heard is somehow that I'm anti-Israel. That's a joke. By the end of my first term, our relationship with Israel is going to be stronger than it ever has been because I will treat it as a true friendship, not a client relationship, not a transactional relationship. What does that mean? I'm gonna lead diplomatically to Abraham Accords 2.0, build on the pact that the Trump administration negotiated, but take it to the next level. Add Saudi Arabia, Oman, Qatar, Indonesia to the list. Work with Israel to make sure that Iran never ever acquires nuclear capabilities. That's in the US interest. That's why I stand for it. I also wanna have Bibi over to the White House, have a strong relationship with him in a way that it seems Biden can't quite do. I also wanna learn from Israel. This is what good friends do for me, do with each other. I've been to Israel many times. Actually, I was talking about my business background. One of my first business partners and founding investors in Royvan was an Israeli firm. I've been there countless times. And the truth of the matter is, I want Israel's tough border policies, tough on crime policies, strong national identity, missile defense system. I wanna learn from those policies because I would love to have them here in the United States. That's how true friends do it not just by checking a box and reading standard talking points from a binder. I'm not a professional politician who reads from that standard binder given to every Republican politician, no. I'm a patriot who speaks the truth. As the next president, I will stand for the interests of the United States of America, not any other country. But that is why I think that our strong relationship with Israel is so important. So I'm sure those myths will keep coming. We'll keep debunking them, tell the truth at every step. You can't handle the heat, stay out of the kitchen, they say. Well, I'm running for U.S. president, so I'm going to be able to handle the heat, but we're going to keep doing it honestly at every step.